Hello, my name is David Kiros. My pronouns are he, him, and I am the Regional Council Manager for Birth of Five Illinois, Region 31, covering Kane County. Thank you for watching Region 31's Early Childhood Regional Needs Assessment Virtual Report. This recording session will provide an overview of findings from the Birth of Five Illinois Region 31 Needs Assessment, as well as talk about the strengths, needs, and recommendations for improving access to and enrollment in early childhood education and care programs in the region. A link to the full report can be found in the description below. If you would like to turn on closed captionings, click the CC icon at the bottom of the video. This will turn on the captions. And if you want a language different than English, click on the gear icon for settings, click on subtitles, then auto translate. And you can scroll down to pick the language you prefer. In 2021, the Illinois Commission on Equitable Early Childhood Education and Care Funding issued a report with findings that highlighted the inequalities in early childhood founding in Illinois and the need to create a better statewide infrastructure to support early childhood professionals, expand services and programs for families and caregivers, and increase enrollment in ECEC programs. The report focuses on the importance of addressing racial inequalities and the need to include vocal voices. In the conversation, funders and decision makers were having about early childhood education and care. To provide a structure for communities, families, and caregivers to engage with the data and share their experiences, a statewide infrastructure was created across 39 regions all of which align with existing Illinois State Board Regional Offices of Education boundaries, but operate independently. Birth to Five Illinois Regional boundaries align with school districts instead of strictly following county lines, which can be a challenge for gathering and interpreting data because many early childhood services are provided by or tied to school districts. Region 31 is located in the northeast corner of the state and it covers King County. It is a traditional home of the Potawatomi, Miami, Zook, Huchang, Kaskaskia, and Kikapu tribes. Within the borders of King County is an extensive forest preserve program with numerous nature preserves, historic sites, trails, a quarry, and a sunken garden. There is something for everyone here. 21 libraries, nine local school districts, Aurora and Judson University, Elgin and Wabansi Community College, park districts, equestrian centers, churches and temples, local farms, zoos, museums, art galleries, and an American Association of Professional Baseball Team, the Kane County Cougars. Joining me in the Region 31 office is Alicia Han, our Family and Community Engagement Specialist, and our Administrative Support, Liliana Guzman. Joining us in this recording is Veronica Tellez, an Action Council member, and Courtney Costello, a member of our Family Council. The experiences and knowledge families, caregivers, and early childhood professionals gain while navigating the complexities of the state's early childhood education and care system are valuable, and understanding their lived experience in the local context is vital for decision makers to ensure communities have access to the programs, services, and supports they need. To this end, Birth the Five Illinois was created to harness family and caregiver voices in early childhood education and care, and serve as a bridge between the communities and policymakers so family, caregiver, and professional experiences can guide the decisions made to expand or enhance services across the state. Our mission is to create a statewide regional infrastructure that will amplify input from communities in the development of policies and funding priorities. 
We support the mobilization of communities to build and sustain equitable access to inclusive, high quality early childhood services for all children and families in the state of Illinois. We envision that our work will help all stakeholders reimagine a more equitable early childhood education and care system that respects family and community voice and works to ensure it is centered and prioritized at every level of decision making in Illinois. We have three main values and goals. First, we must prioritize family voice. Through this transformation centered on authentic family and community engagement, we will address the inequitable distribution of resources and services and rebuild our state's early childhood education and care system. Second, we must address the racial inequities that exist in our early childhood system. In an effort to move our early childhood education and care system to one where racism no longer impacts a child's success, we will work to disseminate barriers that have limited access to high quality services for minoritized children in every corner of our state. Third, we will use the collective impact model to shift the current early childhood system to influence policy and funding at the local, regional, and state level. Birth to Five Illinois will use community-driven feedback to build a system that harnesses knowledge directly from families and provides and encourages decision makers to ensure new and or expanding services are created to meet community needs. Two critical parts of the new statewide infrastructure are family councils and action councils. Located in each of the 39 regions, the councils provide feedback on quantitative data from the Illinois Early Childhood Asset Map, or ICAM, and the Illinois Network of Child Care Resource and Referral Agencies, or INGRA, to help contextualize the data at the local level. The councils meet twice a month in virtual, in-person, or hybrid meetings. The family councils are comprised of parents, caregivers from a wide variety of family types, single parents, adoptive and foster parents, caregivers of relatives, teen parents, two-parent families, multi-generational families, and more, and prioritize the voices of those who have not been involved in this type of work before. We want to highlight those who have been involved in our Region 31 Family Council over the past year and thank them for sharing their experiences with the early childhood system. Adriana Benitez, Courtney Costello, Abigail Duar, Luana Hanley, Lisbeth Martinez, Cynthia McClose, Nelly Paredes, Marlene Ruiz, and Autumn Susberry. Action councils are comprised of early childhood education and care professionals, health care providers, faith leaders, elected officials, and other community members. Each action council reserved two seats for parents, caregivers, to ensure family voices were included in every discussion. Action council members were invited to bring additional aggregated data on programs and services provided by their agency or organization to complement data from ICAM and INCRA. We extend thanks and gratitude to our Region 31 Action Council members. Danette Connors, Wendy Mendoza, Maria Luz Munoz, Darian Page, Kim Peterson, Liz Schaefer, and Veronica Tellez. Beyond the council meetings, additional qualitative data was collected community-wide through focus groups and interviews, and all council members were invited to provide input on each section of their early childhood regional needs assessment. Council members developed the strengths, needs, and recommended next steps that are unique to each region. Regional teams, along with the support of their action and family council members, created a dissemination plan 
and are holding community meetings virtually and in person to share the report's findings. The following slides highlight some data that was discussed by council members and provide insights into the early childhood education and care landscape in our region. A large percentage of the people in Region 31 identify as white or Hispanic. Kane County also has populations of people that identify as Black, Asian, Pacific Islander, or some other non-Hispanic race. The Northeast and Southeast sides of Kane County are heavily populated with children under the age of six. Part of the conversation with council members was around priority populations, defined by the Illinois Early Learning Council as groups that have been historically underserved by early childhood education and care programs. In Region 31, the priority populations include children experiencing homelessness, children of underage parents, children and families who face barriers due to, due to immigration status, children with low caregiver education attainment, and children and families in poverty or deep poverty. While data on children and families from priority populations is limited, there are a few things of note about Region 31. According to the 2020 census, almost half of the children ages birth to five lived at or below 200% of the federal poverty level, meaning that many of them were eligible for a number of state-funded early childhood programs. Those living at the highest rates of poverty are concentrated in the northeast and southeast sides of King County. Additional information about priority populations was gathered through surveys, interviews, and focus groups, and is included throughout our final Early Childhood Regional Needs Assessment Report. Community collaborations are an integral part of the early childhood landscape. Local early childhood community collaborations bring together community agencies, organizations, and individuals with a shared vision or goal. They understand the importance of improving early childhood education and care for children, caregivers, and providers. Region 31's local early childhood collaboration include King County, All Our Kids, or AOK, Early Childhood Network, Strong, Prepared, and Ready for Kindergarten Early Childhood Collaboration, or SPARC, Elgin Partnership for Early Learning, EPL, and St. Charles Early Learning Partnership. The King County, AOK collaboration was established in 1999. Their mission is to promote healthy pregnancies, positive growth and development of all children birth to age five, and support parents or caregivers by assuring access to high quality, well-coordinated, easily accessible system of services and support. The Strong, Prepared, and Ready for Kindergarten Early Childhood Collaboration, or SPARC, was established in 2012. SPARC advocates for all Aurora's young children to have equal access to exemplary ECEC. Stakeholders work jointly to improve and strengthen the ECEC system in Aurora by ensuring parents and the community are informed about the importance of an early childhood education, supporting professional development for teachers, and coordinating relationships between school districts, community agencies, and the early childhood programs. The Elgin Partnership for Early Learning, EPL, was launched in 2012. Its mission is to build a connected community dedicated to helping young children thrive and a vision that, will, that children in the area are happy, healthy, and ready for kindergarten. EPL facilitates program awareness for families, promotes access to high quality child development and early learning experiences, supports quality improvement and capacity building of birth to five professionals and organizations, responds to community data about strengths, needs, and gaps, and supports community partner collaborations to improve kindergarten success. The St. Charles Early Learning Partnership was founded in 2019. It brings together people, resources, and services to create a community-wide system of support so every child from birth to age eight in the St. Charles area is healthy, safe, eager to learn, and ready to succeed. Region 31 is home to a variety of early childhood education and care programs and providers, all servicing children based on the licensing, funding, and staffing requirements. But access to early childhood programs and services is not equitable for all of the region's families. The east side of the region contains many facilities and services. A large percentage of eligible children live 100 to 200 percent below the federal poverty level in that area, and families cannot afford to access that care. 
As one focus group participant stated, when you don't qualify for help, there isn't any, anything out there for you. You have to be able to pay for it on your own. This is hard to do with rent, mortgage, car notes, insurance, utilities, gas, and food. You are forced to decide. Income thresholds and guidelines are not inclusive of all working families. The criteria disqualifies many families who need support and assistance, and the cost of childcare in Kane County is high, which causes hardship for families both below and above allowable income levels. Some parents have had to quit their jobs or turn down career advancements due to the lack of available childcare and cited the cost of childcare as a reason they hadn't used it. There are programs that families can apply to through the Illinois Department of Human Services or IDHS called the Child Care Assistance Program or CCAP. This program provides families with limited access to financial resources and access to quality, affordable child care while allowing caregivers to continue working and or completing their education. All families are required to cost share on a sliding scale based on family size and income. However, not all providers will accept CCAP due to, to the delayed payments, and not all families want to complete the application, which is lengthy and can be difficult to complete. There are funded publicly preschool programs available in the region, such as Early Head Start, Head Start, Preschool for All, and the Preschool for All expansion programs. However, not all programs are full day, nor do all provide transportation to and from the program, leaving many families who qualify for publicly funded preschool choosing not to enroll. Additionally, there are not enough slots for families to enroll their, ch their child in care across all programs in the region, leaving some families with very limited options for child care. Through community meetings, focus groups, interviews, and surveys, families in the region reiterated the urgent need for more affordable child care and preschool options staffed with providers and teachers that are well paid, supported, and who will want to continue working in early childhood long term. Similar to other areas of the state, Region 31 is experiencing a staff and teacher shortage, preventing programs from operating at full capacity or expanding to meet community needs. Staff turnover is a big contributor to the workforce shortage, and it remains a concern among community members in Region 31. There are many short-term caregivers who are interning to receive a degree or working long enough to gain experience and then living child, leaving child care centers for better financial opportunities. A council member noted that it's difficult to find qualified people to work in child care, and the people that work there use the position as a temporary stopgap while they obtain their college degree so they can move on to another job. In some areas of the region, many parents and caregivers are utilizing a family member or friend for their child care needs. This means if the family member or friend is not available to provide child care, parents and caregivers are unable to work outside their home or have to take off during work times when a family member or friend is not available to care for their children. Others have been forced to patch together their child's care with some time covered by a friend, family member, and enrollment in part-time childcare. Although Region 31 is rich with trusted partners and a plethora of resources and services within its ECEC system, access is lacking. There are too many complicated pathways to gain entrance into the system, leaving parents and caregivers confused and guessing. Community and council members identified several strengths of the early childhood system in the region. For the sake of time, I'll only share a few. One, there is a strong belief that all families should have access to high quality learning opportunities for their children. Two, we have four local collaborations providing support to families. And a third one, there are lots of community supports and activities for families. 
Community and council members also identified challenges and opportunities for growth in the region as well. For the sake of time, I'll only share a few. One, expansion of CCAP eligibility. Another, more affordable options for childcare, especially for families that live at or below 200% of the federal poverty level. And third, information about the availability of existing early childhood programs to help families navigate and connect to resources. Based on community and council conversations, recommendations have been made on how early childhood education and care programs and services can be improved for families in the region. Recommendations will pre be presented to lawmakers, state agencies, local elected officials, and funders so they can better understand the needs of families in the region and share the recommendations with them so that they can see how to best meet those needs. These are a few of the recommendations made, but more can be found in our regional needs assessment. Recommendation number one, increase maximum household incomes to qualify more families for childcare assistance. Recommendation two, increase the number of childcare facilities. Recommendation three, fund coordinated referral systems such as the Integrated Referral and Information System, also known as IRIS, and invite participation from trusted community partners and organizations. This summer, we'll be out in the community talking to more families, providers, and stakeholders about their experiences with early childhood education and care, and we want to talk with you. We invite community members, families, and early childhood professionals to join the conversation by filling out a council interest form. Please go to www.birthto5il.com forward slash councils, or click the link in the description to get involved. Interest forms will close later this summer with council meetings fully resuming in August. I wanna thank our state partners for their support and you for watching. We encourage you to stay in touch with us by visiting our regional page at www.birthto5il.com forward slash region 31, joining our Facebook group, or reaching out to me via email at dkeros at birthto5il.com. Links to our pages, along with my email address, are available in the description below. Thank you for your time and we look forward to connecting with you soon.